see any movement. However, they are moving around, this is the important bit, by virtue of their temperature, because it's warm. Because you see, it's high temperatures. At higher temperatures, particles have more energy. At lower temperatures, they have less energy. Until the lowest temperature in the universe, which is absolute zero, minus 273 degrees centigrade. This is not far off from absolute zero. It's minus 196. Minus 196. Now, what I want to show you now, I'm going to pour some liquid nitrogen over this balloon. And what's going to happen, as I pour the liquid nitrogen over the balloon, you will observe, you will observe a change. I will be decreasing the pressure. The molecules which have lots of energy now will have much less energy. And as they have less energy, they will start to move more slowly. They will start to move more slowly. And as they start to move more slowly, so they will start to exert a much lower pressure. And therefore, the balloon decreases in shape. The balloon is decreasing in shape. I shall continue to pour on more liquid nitrogen. Please watch carefully. And you'll notice the balloon is getting smaller as I continue. Until eventually, if I were to pour on enough liquid nitrogen, then of course the whole thing would collapse into just a few drops of liquid. But I'm, as I said, I'm not going to go that far. I wanted to show the effect. So the balloon has now collapsed. Why has it collapsed? Because it's got much colder. And if it's got much colder, then the molecules inside have much less energy. If they have much less energy, they move around much more slowly, and therefore they exert a much lower <coughs> But physical changes are frequently reversible. And if I throw this up in the air now, throw it up in the air a few times, and then catch it, then you will observe very shortly that the balloon will be restored to its former shape. And that is because this type of change is a reversible change. And this idea, the idea that gases can expand and contract hugely has a huge number of applications in engineering. This understanding this is related to the science of thermodynamics. Thermo, heat and dynamics movement, a most important branch of engineering, thanks to which a fantastic number of devices have been invented, especially all internal combustion engines, all modern motor cars, rockets, anything that burns a fuel, not only does the chemistry have to be understood, but the physics as well, and that's the temperatures and the ratios in which the gases expand during their, their um, combustion. Now, I'm going to be on this subject of gas. Now, to slightly just move just a little more about the physics of, of air before we move back to chemistry. Air, of course, is a 